Hey guys, Captain Sia Richardson here from Flats Class YouTube. Today we're going to learn a little bit about how to leverage, if you will, winter tides for success. That's right. Today I'm going to give you a couple hard hitting points on how you can take advantage of the late fall, all winter long season of catching fish. And I'm talking redfish and speckled trout. I'll tell you what, I'm going to work on some of the sub points in these categories and you go watch this action with uh, my client Rick Harnish. We broke in his brand new Hells Bay 18 Waterman up near the Suwannee River. Well, the action speaks for itself. You go check the action out. I'll be back here in a few clips to talk to you some more. Flats Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. Even when the water is 61, 62, that's why I like these quarter moon tides. Nice job. Very nice job. slow swimming you know that color even though this is appears to be filthy water it's really not it's pretty it's, it's clear tannic. it's tannin water that is is still somewhat clear this time of year there's not a lot of algae you know, we're fishing here first of december and this is some really good uh, water right here. and that that beer run color tough to beat Tough to beat. Anything with gold this time of year. Gold's always a good color, even if it's a secondary color. It doesn't always have to be the primary color, but gold is a good color this time of year. And that's a respectable fish right respectable there. Respectable fish. Very respectable. You know that next little point there, that little thin grass point in front of you. you start seeing the mullet move around, that's a good sign the water is just a bit warmer. Maybe throw to the back of that draw where that next thin point comes off that up. Because that water's coming out and these, these mullet are congregated here for a reason. You see the, the, clay, the clay line out there on the marsh falling down. So the water's definitely coming out. And you can see all of this stuff is pouring out. So the fish are coming. They're going to come out of these back little creeks. It's like bass fishing. But see, this is the tide that is perfect for it, Rick. This is an unbelievable tide because the tide's never going to get too high and it's never going to get too low. So it keeps them right in this zone. He just came behind that, flared his, uh, his tech pins there. And he was real slow about it. He was real slow to make sure this is what he wanted. And that's why the quarter moon tides here in the cooler months are the best tides to fish. Job. Yeah. And the drink he goes. He's probably enjoying this sunshine right here. <laughs> A phenomenal day of fishing, and I say this almost every time we do one of these fishing tip videos. It is very, very nice to be able to afford the video footage that gives you a good idea 
on how these tips really work instead of just being a talking head and giving you a couple of half dozen tips and then you're just left up to trying to figure it out on your own. We're, we try to do better than that here at Flats Class. All right, here are the six critical points, I would say, for winter tides. Low water, okay, the weather and the wind, moon phase, water temp, You'll also see water clarity and then the fish behavior itself. So here, you know, these are generalities that you can make work for yourself. One of the big aspects to fishing the winter, I guess, season, if you will, is picking the right days. Now, for me, number one is I particularly like to fish the moon phase, which is the quarter moon, the neat tides. This helps me because it doesn't allow as much water to move. Instead of you having these big water changes, you know, where it's up and down, now you have this subtle water change. So the water never gets really too high and it never gets really too low. It stays right about the same, which allows the sun to warm that water. When the water gets warmer, the metabolism of the fish, which is cold-blooded, becomes such that he's like, he starts looking around, he looks to eat something. Now it still has to be a good presentation and it has to be easy, but these are things that happen every, you know, week or so in the wintertime because the, the weather pattern is about on every fifth or sixth day you have a change again. So I'm speaking to the fact that you could see how nice the weather was the day that we fished. I'm gonna give you an idea it was bluebird skies, so it was after the front. We probably had water temps that were close to about 62 degrees, 60 to 62 degrees. That's what they, they look like. And I'm going to say the air temp when we started that morning was probably about 41 degrees. It was pretty cold. It got down into the 30s that night. But we started later. One of the benefits of winter fishing, starting around 9.30, and we fished and the bite just kept getting better and better and better all day long. And now it eventually warmed up to about the mid 60s, but I'm telling you, it felt cold on the water all day long. So water temps rise, we, we picked zones that were protected from a northeast wind, which made the water more still. So even though there was a breeze, we were tucked up in the back of coves where it was slicked out water and that water would warm faster. It also had very dark bottom. So it appeared like the water was muddy. It wasn't muddy at all. In fact, it was pretty crystal clear. Uh, the fish behavior was somewhat negative in the morning, but it got better as the day went on because the water was warming up. We started with a higher tide and then it slowly kind of weeped out all day long and pulled us off the bank until eventually we had to make a little bit of a rougher ride on the outside to get back. But I'm always looking for like that third day after the front, fourth day after the front, just before the next front starts to approach again. We still have those northeast winds to east winds and you have those bluebird days. Once the wind gets to the south and allows the clouds to return, then the sight fishing stuff gets tough again. But if you're into sight fishing, and this is the time of year, I would say, for most of you guys that enjoy that low water sight fishing, because you have those bluebird skies, and it's just, it's nice. It's really, really nice. All right, join me back here in a few minutes. But in the meantime, go watch Rick mess up some more redfish. I'm telling you, that was a fantastic day of fishing. It was a lot of fun to watch it all from the polar platform. Go check it out. Just moved down, right there. Did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I saw. That was the one I saw. When he passed my bait and I saw this guy. He came flying out. I was like, I was like, that's a damn redfish. Yeah, that beer run, buddy. They see that. You see it. I'm going to get a couple of good releases of this one here. Another stud. As you can see, Rick's doing pretty doggone good pitching along this grass edge here. 
And the key is, is the tide just does not move a whole lot during the quarter moon tides here in the late fall and early winter, which is a good thing. The fish stay in one spot. We can target them. Well, makes it easy pickings. Just saying. Going right, he's posted off off that little piece of mother-in-law grass he's coming across. Look at that one there. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know you're here. Shadow's got him. Shadow's got him. There's another one right there. They're, they're waking all through here. He's after he got it. That was, we knew that was going to happen. I'm going to set the... There's a bunch of fish here, boy. Watch this fish here. Oh, look, look at all these fish. Mm-hmm. I'm watching them. Get your rod, brother. And I'm going to let you land these. This is a good pocket right here. <laughs> awesome job. Awesome job. I could see that one just head waking out of there. I knew it was going to happen. These tides, they're a difference maker. They're a big difference maker. The fish have to stay out here off the edges where you can get to them. Gotta be fishing zones like this on quarter moon tides. The tides too full, fish get in the grass, but this tide, perfect. Cold weather, bluebird skies, fish those quarter moon tides. Let me come down there and give you a hand with that guy. What a meathead. Look at the size of that fish. Okay. Him out so he's going away from you. There you go. The best part about it, he's going to scoot too. <laughs> Nicely done. That's why I really love this time of year. I mean, it is fantastic. Yes, it does get cold. Yes, you have to dress for each adventure. That's for sure. You gotta have plenty of layers on. But the water's clean and clear. The sky doesn't have a whole lot of clouds in it most days. The high tide never really gets too high, honestly, especially if you focus on those quarter moon tides like I taught you in that lesson. And then the low water makes it even easier. And the fish allow you to fish them later in the day so you don't have to be up first thing in the morning. And because there's typically no bait on the flats, whatever lure you're throwing or fly, you're catching fish. Hope you enjoyed today's tip and the strategy behind the tip that might help you put a few more fish over the side of your skiff, kayak, bay boat, whatever it happens to be. If you like what you're seeing here at Flask Class YouTube, I encourage you to tell all your friends and please, guys, subscribe. You want these tips before you head to the water? Well, next weekend. Come on now. All right, help us out and help us make you a better angler. Until next time, Captain C.A. Richardson, signing off.